Hi, I'm Mark Vitale. I'm a hand, wrist, and elbow specialist at ONS, and I'm going to be talking today a little bit about ligament injuries of the thumb, which are common injuries. Um, I have no disclosures for potential conflicts of interest. Uh, so as an overview, we're going to talk a little bit about the anatomy of ligaments of the thumbs, different types of injuries, how do we diagnose these injuries, treatment options, and some recent advances. So the anatomy of the hand uh, in general and of the thumb is quite complex, and we're going to really focus on what's called the metacarpal phalangeal joint of the thumb, or the MP joint of the thumb, the knuckle in the middle of the thumb. Um, so it was designed to be stable in both extension and flexion, uh, being supported by a variety of structures, including ligaments, tendons, and muscles. So ligaments, as we know, are the tough, fibrous, flexible, connective tissues that connect bone to bone or bone to cartilage, and they stabilize joints. So the most important stabilizers of the thumb MP joint are the ligaments. So the ulnar collateral ligament, or UCL, has uh, two components, which you can see in the diagram on the lower right. There's a proper and accessory uh, collateral ligament, which are designed to be stable in different points along the arc of motion of the thumb. Um, there's also an adductor aponeurosis volar to the insertion of the ulnar collateral ligament. Um, and then there's the radial collateral ligament, which is the ligament not on the inside of the thumb, but on the outside of the thumb. And that um, has a similar anatomy, um, except that the proper ligament originates a bit, a bit more dorsal on the head of the metacarpal bone. And then we have the dynamic stabilizers of this joint, which include ligaments and, and tendons. So the extrinsic stabilizers are the extensor pollicis longus, the extensor pollicis brevis, the flexor pollicis longus, and the intrinsic stabilizers, which means the muscles that originate and insert within the hand itself, are the abductor pollicis brevis, the flexor pollicis brevis, and the adductor pollicis. So what does all this uh, anatomy mean? Well, it, it means we have, we have um, a very c complex design of the thumb that allows for stability, but there are a variety of different injuries that can occur that can compromise the stability. So the most common of these injuries is the ulnar collateral ligament rupture. It's common in skiing and other sports. One study showed that up to 32% uh, of injuries seen at a ski base were ulnar collateral ligament tears. So the mechanism of injury of an ulnar collateral ligament rupture is hyperabduction and extension of the thumb at the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Um, so in this diagram on the lower, um, lower left of the screen that you can see is a cartoon of a hand falling on a ski pole tearing the ligament. And that's exactly the direction of the force that can um, injure this particular soft tissue structure. And this uh, appropriately is called a skier's thumb. That's an acute injury to this ligament, the ulnar collateral ligament. So chronic injuries to this ligament have been called gamekeeper's thumbs. And that stems from uh, hunters in Scotland many years ago who would hunt uh, small rabbits and uh, break the necks of rabbits. And over many years, that repetitive stress could uh, rupture the ligament. Um, you can also rupture the ligament on the outside of the thumb, the radial collateral ligament. And that's been called a reverse gamekeeper's thumb. And lastly, there are fractures that uh, include the ligament of the proximal phalanx that, although they're fractures, they behave more like ligament injuries, and we'll talk briefly about those. So here's a cartoon showing um, the torn ulnar collateral ligament, which, which uh, on the inside of the thumb, which when torn allows the thumb to move excessively. So how do we examine patients with this specific injury, with an ulnar collateral ligament rupture? Well, patients will often come in with the thumb resting in a position of ulnar deviation. There is tenderness where the ligament inserts on the proximal phalanx. They may have a bump or a palpable mass, which suggests something called a Stenner lesion, which we'll talk about some more. But most importantly, um, the joint stability exam is, is crucial to assess. So we should assess the stability of this ligament both with the thumb fully extended and with the thumb in about 30 degrees of MP joint flexion. Um, so instability from a surgical standpoint is defined as greater than 35 degrees of radial deviation or more than 15 degrees of difference in side-to-side -side motion on an injured thumb compared to a non-injured thumb. Um, and an often quoted study by Heyman and colleagues in 1993 
showed that if you test the thumb in full extension and there's more than 35 degrees of instability of the metacarpal phalangeal joint, you've likely torn both the proper and accessory ulnar collateral ligaments and there's a high likelihood of something called a stenner lesion, which necessitates surgery to treat. Um, so here's a video of a patient of mine um, in the preoperative area who ultimately needed surgery, but we're testing his stability of the metacarpal phalangeal joint with the thumb fully extended and now in 30 degrees of flexion. And you can see um, uh, significant instability where there's really no endpoint to a radially directed stress. So this implies that the ulnar collateral ligament was completely torn, both the accessory and proper ligaments, and this was an injury that did need surgery to repair. So if the exam's not so obvious, how, do, how can we detect these injuries? So advanced imaging is very useful. A dedicated wrist coil in an MRI can be used to look at the small structures in the thumb and hand, and the sensitivity and specificity of an MRI to detect a UCL tear approaches 100% these days with better imaging techniques. So when is an MRI useful to look at these uh, thumb ligament injuries? Well, when it's difficult to examine a patient because of pain, when there's a borderline degree of instability, maybe in the 25 to 30 degree range, when there's a possible stenner lesion, um, when we're assessing the cartilage in the joint in, in chronic injuries to decide if we're going to do something called a fusion, and um, that in all of these situations it's helpful. It's not necessary when there's obvious instability with no firm endpoint in the example that I showed you. So I've mentioned this uh, term, a Stenner lesion, a few times. So what is a Stenner lesion? Well, Bertrand Stenner in 1962 described the specific UCL ligament um, injury pattern in which the ulnar collateral ligament is completely torn and it retracts in a way that the underlying muscle, the adductor aponeurosis, gets between the ligament and the bone. So it prevents the ligament from being able to heal back to the bone by itself. Um, so the UCL in this situation has no healing potential, and this is an injury which does require surgery to restore stability of the thumb. Um, so, so why are these injuries important to talk about? What's the big deal if you tear one of these ligaments? While these are one of the most common hand injuries, a UCL rupture specifically is about 10 times more common than an RCL rupture, but they're, they're in a common uh, group of injuries. And the thumb is so important to our daily function. So the thumb is thought to provide up to 40% of hand function, and uh, total disability of the thumb results in what's been uh, classified as 22% of bodily function. So if you don't have proper use of the thumb, uh, this can be a pretty significant injury. And ulnar collateral ligament or radial collateral ligament injuries that don't heal result in symptomatic instability of the thumb with pain, weakness of pinch strength, and potentially arthritis, although the latter is somewhat controversial. So patients that have UCL injuries uh, will have consequences with pinching and gripping. They'll often describe that grasping an object is difficult, turning a key or a doorknob um, presents problems, and writing is difficult. Patients with radial collateral ligament injuries have similar problems, but they may say pushing open a door with the outside of their thumb is difficult, opening a jar or a bottle cap, or pushing buttons can be difficult. So how can we treat these injuries? Well, a high proportion of these injuries can be treated without surgery. Stable tears can be treated with immobilization. So typically, we'll immobilize the thumb and part of the wrist in a thumb spike cast for four weeks, followed by part-time splinting for another three to four weeks. The thumb may stiffen up, and some patients may ultimately need some hand therapy with an OT or a PT. And there is a high success rate uh, with non-operative treatment of stable ligament tears. However, although patient satisfaction may be high, one study found that 34% of patients will have symptomatic instability. So for the patients that, or specific injuries that aren't amenable to non-surgical treatment, how do we treat these injuries? So the most common injury, the acute ulnar collateral ligament rupture, and less commonly acute radial collateral ligament rupture, patients who specifically have the high degree of instability that we mentioned, more than 35 degrees of opening, greater than 15 degrees of asymmetry, those with a Stenner lesion, those with no discrete endpoint to stressing the thumb, or those with a highly retracted uh, tear, typically we will consider surgical treatment. 
And when we treat these early, within the first days or weeks, we can get an excellent result just by simply suturing the tendon back to the bone, the ligament rather, back to the bone. So the traditional repairs involve either using suture to repair ligament to ligament or using these tiny little suture anchors that go in the bone in the proximal phalanx and allow us to tear the ligament back to the bone, uh, repair the ligament back to the bone. So this is a patient of mine on the top right of the screen that you can see in the forceps is the actual ulnar collateral ligament and these very small anchors can be used to be placed into the bone to tie the ligament back to the bone where it belongs. And if you accurately repair the ligament back to its anatomic insertion, there's excellent results reported in the literature. Greater than 90% of patients will have a good to excellent result with full or close to full range of motion, no instability, and um, no pain down the line. Now, sometimes when we see these injuries months or years later, it's not possible to repair the tissue back to the bone because the ulnar collateral ligament may have attenuated or shrunk and it may be difficult to mobilize this ligament back to, back to where it needs to insert. So the textbook teaching is a chronic UCL rupture or a gamekeeper's thumb is one in which it's treated six weeks or more after um, the initial injury. The reality is though usually there's some good local tissue that can be used even several months later. So it's something that's often um, assessed at the time of surgery, whether a direct repair can be performed or not. But in chronic UCL ruptures, when a direct repair cannot be performed, there are a number of options. So um, one is to use dynamic stabilizers with tendon transfers. More commonly, a static stabilization is used with a tendon graft. Newer techniques, including something called an internal brace, can supplement local tissue repair. And in patients where arthritis is present and they have instability, typically we'll perform a fusion of the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Um, and what about those, those fractures that I discussed uh, that can result in instability? Well, there are specific fractures at the base of the thumb proximal phalanx where the ulnar collateral ligament inserts onto that if they are um, if they comprise the majority of the ligament insertion, they'll lead to the same type of instability as a primary ligament rupture. These injuries can have non-union rates ranging in the 25 to 60 percent range. They can result in not only instability but rotational deformity of the thumb. And we will treat these injuries with surgery if there's significant instability or displacement of the joint. And instead of using a suture or a suture anchor to repair the ligament, typically we'll perform an open reduction and internal fixation where we use either screws or other implants to reconnect the bone back to where it belongs and that will restore stability. Um, I'm going to sort of wrap up this talk with a newer concept. Lately these injuries have been in the news a lot uh, with a lot of high profile athletes uh, sustaining ulnar collateral ligament ruptures of the thumb. Um, and in these last few years thumb ligament injuries have been treated in a way that allows for more rapid return to play. Instead of being season-ending injuries, recently athletes have returned weeks later. You may, have, um, you may remember Michael Trout, former MVP in Major League Baseball, sustained one of these injuries to his non-dominant hand, and he was back to some degree of play weeks later. Uh, Drew Brees, the Super Bowl winning quarterback of the um, New Orleans Saints also tore his ulnar collateral ligament in his throwing hand, and he was back to uh, quarterbacking for the Saints five weeks later instead of a year later. So what allowed this more rapid return to play? Uh, well, a newer technique called an internal brace augmentation does allow people to get back to activity earlier, we believe. So while traditional repairs with suture anchors require prolonged immobilization, which delays rehab, we can now augment the repair, not just with a suture anchor, but with a strong suture that overlies the ligament. It's been called an internal brace, and it provides immediate biomechanical support throughout the arc of motion uh, during this initial crucial period of ligament healing. Um, so it does allow early range of motion. Patients don't need to be casted for weeks and weeks, and uh, it does accelerate rehabilitation. And there have been some recent biomechanical studies that have supported this.
One recent study looked at uh, 12 cadaveric specimens and divided them into a group repaired just with suture anchors versus a group repaired with a suture anchor and an internal brace. And the internal brace group had a much higher um, maximal load to failure and load at clinical failure compared to the group that just had a suture anchor. So another more recent cadaveric study looked at uh, four different scenarios in eight cadaveric thumbs. So it looked at an intact thumb without a ligament injury. It looked at a thumb with a simulated tear of both the proper and accessory ligaments. It looked at a thumb with a, a simulated tear that was repaired with an anchor and a thumb with a simulated tear that was repaired with an anchor and an internal brace. And the group with the internal brace had a significantly higher angular stiffness compared with the repair alone without decreasing range of motion. Um, thus far, we're gathering more data on clinical results, but most hand surgeons are using this technique to allow for an earlier return to play or activity. So in summary, these injuries of ligamentous injuries to the thumb are common. The UCL of the thumb specifically is uh, a very important ligament to provide a stable pinch, and injuries can be quite disabling. Early recognition and treatment of these injuries is important, and recent surgical advances may allow for earlier return to activity or sports. Thank you.